Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying Sasquatch encounters. Now, before I start, I want to let you know that on this channel, I like to share encounters that are more of a slow boil, that tend to create an atmosphere and a mood. If you're a fan of encounters like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. I post new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and if you have your notifications on, you'll be the first to know when those videos go live. All right, let's get right into it. In May of 2003, Angie Keith and her mother were sitting in Angie's car at the Pink Liquor Store on Highway 44 West and the Dixie Highway at the bottom of Martin Hill when they noticed two dogs running loose, emerging from a nearby wooded area. The dogs were walking swiftly away from the woods. One had its tail between its legs as if in fear, but they didn't run or bark at all. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. Suddenly, an eight-foot-tall, hairy creature walked across the field. It had long, black hair and swung its long arms dramatically as it walked, they said. It walked straight up, not hunched over. It was too far away to see its face, hands, or feet. The head was large and round, not conical. It had very wide shoulders. It appeared as if it had just crossed Dixie Highway near a flood wall. It walked swiftly across the field and disappeared into the woods. In May of 2006, another Bullitt County resident reportedly witnessed a similar creature walking across her yard at around 2 p.m. in broad daylight. I was taking a nap in the sofa in my living room when my dog, who was chained up in our backyard, began barking frantically, the witness later reports. When I sat up and looked out my back window, I saw this creature walking on two legs across my backyard. It was a clear, sunny day, and there was no mistaking what I saw. It was a Bigfoot. I called my husband at work and said, I saw it, I saw it, and he said, saw what? The Bigfoot, I exclaimed. He told me to call my neighbor and warn her to lock her doors as it was headed her way. The anonymous witness describes the creature she saw as seven to eight feet tall, with long arms, and covered with reddish-brown hair. Another such creature was seen at 9 a.m. on December 16, 2009, by a frightened deer hunter. I was hunting on a farm I had been hunting for a few weeks. From the stand I was in that morning, I have always seen a few deer after the daybreak, but that morning I'd see nothing. I thought it was weird since I always see deer there. Well, I take pictures with my phone about every time I go hunting. I took one of me sitting in the tree. After I looked at the picture to see a black figure in the background, I thought that is a deer. So, I began to slowly turn around. What I saw, I will never forget. It was very tall, brown, and it was standing on two legs. I went for my rifle to get a better look with my scope, and it was gone. I don't think it seen me as I was 20 feet up in the stand. I think what I saw might have been a Bigfoot. I'm not one to believe in that kind of stuff, but what I saw was not your everyday thing. I will never forget it. This thing was about 70 yards from me, so I didn't get a real good look at the details. It was 6 
to seven feet tall, very hairy, brown hair, and standing on two legs. Two Billet County hunters claimed they saw an eight-foot-tall, dark, hairy creature run across the field in front of them on Highway 45 near Claremont at dusk one evening in the fall of 2011. One year later, just before dusk one evening in the fall of 2012, two girls were skipping rocks on an outdoor pond when one of them heard a grunting sound. It sounded like a hog, one of the girls explained. When she looked in the direction of the noise, the sound stopped. She then saw a tall, blackish-brown figure standing on two legs in the tree line. The arms hung straight down to its knees, she later reported. The head was pointed towards the top. No noticeable ears, a wide, flat nose with noticeable nostrils, and its shoulders were very wide like a football player. The creature never moved. Immediately upon seeing the figure, she grabbed her friend and fled inside the house. Tree knocks had been heard previously in the area by her father. Another late-night sighting of Bigfoot crossing the road was made in Murray, Kentucky, Calloway County in 1968. The two witnesses were Dr. Richard Young and Mr. Charles Denton. Two more Calloway County residents found themselves in the exact same predicament one evening six years later in 1974 as they drove through the wooded bottomlands. My boyfriend and myself were taking a drive after work, one of them said over 30 years after the sighting occurred. I had recently gotten my license, and we loved to drive down Rattling Bridge Road. We called it Rattling Bridge Road because it had a wooden bridge and the slats rattled on as you crossed it. It was late evening, just getting dusky dark. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a figure crossed the road about 150 yards in front of them. Speechless, the young couple watched as the creature took a few deliberate strides and was across the road, disappearing into the darkening woods along the creek. She recalled that the thing walked upright like a man, was six to seven feet tall, and covered with long, unkempt-looking, dark-colored fur. The shoulders were thick, she said, and it walked with them hunkered forward a bit. An 11-year-old boy vacationing with his family in Hamlin, Kentucky, was next in line to view the beast, or one like it, in August of 1975. Hamlin sits right on the shores of Kentucky Lake in the extreme southwestern part of the state. These creatures have been encountered, as we shall see, all along the shores of this lake and its sister, Lake Barkley, and in every county that borders its waters. My family and I were on vacation in western Kentucky near Kentucky Lake, the witness later said. I was 11 years old at the time, and for some reason, I was alone. I don't remember what I was doing, but I heard some noise coming from a creek nearby. The boy looked out the window and couldn't believe his eyes. There, standing with its back to him, down at the small creek, was a huge, hairy creature. It was huge, seven or eight feet tall, and covered in dark brown hair. Curious, at first at least, as to what it could be, he got up and quietly walked out the back door and down the steps. At this point, he recalled he finally realized what he was looking at and panicked. As he hurried back up the steps, he stumbled and the back door banged wide open. On hearing this, the creature looked at him and took a step on two feet in his direction. 
the boy ran inside, locked the door, and lay down on the floor next to the wall, so it could not see me if it looked in the window. Strangely, his memory ends here, as if he blacked out for a time. He could not recall any strange sounds being associated with the sighting, nor even if the creature had approached the house, whether out of curiosity or ill intent. Why he might have blacked out also remains a mystery, but could be overlooked if it had happened only once. Did Bigfoot visit Alexandria, Kentucky, the county seat of Campbell County, on the night of November 6, 2008? One resident thinks it did. Ryan B. claims that at around 8.30 p.m. on that evening, as he and his wife were relaxing in front of the television, the house dog suddenly ran to the front door, barking like crazy. His wife got up and then heard a noise outside that sounded like a bird screeching. Ryan hit the mute button so he could hear it too. He did. He immediately got up and walked out the front door onto the porch where he heard something big running down the hill only about 20 yards away, crashing sticks and leaves. Ryan ran back into the house to grab a flashlight, then returned outside and walked to the fence line which separated his yard from a deep hollow. Everything was deathly quiet, he claimed, as he scanned the area with the flashlight. I didn't see anything. I'm thinking in my mind that whatever it was is already gone. I looked around for about 30 seconds, then it screamed at me from about 50 yards away. Scared me real bad. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. I've lived in the country my whole life and have never heard anything like this. It sounded like a peacock screaming and I definitely got the feeling that it was warning me off. It screamed again, deeper and more guttural, then ran off deeper into the woods, heading towards the Licking River. It sounded like a bull running through the woods, Ryan said. The witness claimed that although it sounded somewhat like a peacock, it definitely was not a bird of any kind. It tromped heavily through the woods, he said, it did not fly. Four years early, in 2004, near Cold Spring, two members of the Garcia family claimed they were awakened during the night by a loud commotion taking place outside their home. When Mr. Garcia got up and peeked out the blinds, he was shocked to see a large, man-like figure covered in dark hair and walking on two feet, prowling around his backyard. His son-in-law also reportedly looked out and saw the creature. After a few minutes, it walked away and disappeared into the night. Daniel S. was but one of a group of five people who encountered Bigfoot on the night of June 1st, 2007, in Sanders, Kentucky. He claims that that at 11.17 p.m. that evening, they were able to observe the beast for nearly 10 minutes. At about 10.45, I was out giving water to my friend's billy goat, while my friends were at a little campfire we had built. He later said, As I was finishing up watering the goat, all of a sudden I smelled this foul odor. He has had Billy for four years now, and I knew that the smell wasn't coming from his pen. I just shrugged it off and returned to the campfire. Daniel didn't mention the smell to the group, but ten minutes later, one of the group, a girlfriend of one of his buddies, complained that she smelled something sour. After a couple of minutes, the smell was so overpowering that the entire group was complaining. Then, immediately, we heard what we thought was a coyote until, at the end of the howl, there were three loud grunts. At this point, the girls wanted to go back up to the house. 
As we were getting ready to leave, we could hear something in the woods close to us. We were just getting ready to put out the fire when, in the distance, we could see an upright figure. On seeing the humanoid figure, the group merely thought that it was one of their buddy's dad playing a practical joke and relaxed a little. They couldn't have been more wrong. They soon realized that it was far too large to be their friend's father. In fact, it was far too large to be any human at all. They hurriedly packed up their belongings, keeping a watchful eye on the figure to make sure it wasn't coming any closer, and vacated the area in all due haste. As we were leaving, I watched the creature cross the field and enter the woods on the other side, Daniel said. He described that thing as dark-colored, anywhere from six to eight feet tall, the thing that stood out the most to him was the girth of the body, which he said was from three to three and a half feet wide. The foul odor, he said, smelled like a mixture of soured milk and mildew. That incident happened on a tobacco farm surrounded by woods on the outskirts of Sanders, Kentucky. Picture the scene. A woman sits in the front room of her quaint country home, sewing on a dress she plans to wear to church this coming Sunday. The back door is open and sunshine pours in. All is quiet in this peaceful setting, until a five-year-old boy bursts in through the back screen door, panic-stricken and crying. The door slams as he runs and jumps into the woman's lap and clings tightly to her neck. What in the world? The woman thinks as the boy's tears run down his face. Mommy, he sobs. Mommy, it's the hairy man. It's the hairy man. Don't let it get me. This is not a scene from some well-written Hollywood Sasquatch movie. The incident allegedly took place on Wilson Ridge, Casey County in May of 1957. For the rest of that hot, long summer, the child would not leave his mother's side and would panic, crying and screaming in terror every time they tried to take him outdoors. He was even too terrified to make it to and from the car without breaking down. Even as an adult, he refuses to speak about the incident to anyone, including his own family. What in the world could he have seen to have scarred the lad so? Perhaps it was the same hairy man which scared two other Casey County children four years earlier in Liberty, Kentucky. The children came upon the creature described as being large and covered with dark brown hair lighter on the chest area, giving it the appearance of a gray vest, while it was apparently digging in the ground using two sticks as tools. According to one of the children who reported the incident over 50 years later, the beast was approximately six and a half to seven feet tall and appeared to weigh in excess of 300 pounds. It had very dark brown, coarse, stringy hair similar to a goat's. The face was black and the nose looked like a flattened human nose. It also had two canine teeth that were somewhat larger than a human's. It had no sagittal crest, no noticeable breasts or sexual organs, and no odor that they could detect. The thing's fingers and toenails, he noted, were long, thick, uneven, and squared. The youth fled when the monster began to approach them, bearing its large, square teeth, but making no sound at all. This incident reportedly took place only a half mile from the mysterious Green River, a name which pops up in reports again and again. In the 1960s, a tall, hairy thing was allegedly seen peering into the windows of a home on U.S. 127 near Liberty, Kentucky, the Casey County seat. The window reportedly belonged to a teenage girl. It was two stories off the ground. Also, in Casey County during the 1960s, 
The vicinity of Goose Creek was said to be the haunt of some fierce varmint, which no coon dog in the county could tree. In fact, just one whiff of the creature's scent, it was said, would send the bravest coon dog running in the other direction every time. Goose Creek, a tributary of the Green River, was also the location in which a retired Kentucky State Trooper reportedly heard a nighttime yowler in 1965. One night in the winter of 1969, two motorists were driving down Highway 49 near Liberty, Kentucky, when they ran afoul of the unexplained. It was around 8 p.m. when their vehicle rounded a curve in the road just past a place called Jacktown, and two of the vehicle's occupants, the driver and the passenger directly behind him, saw something which had apparently just stepped out onto the road on two legs. I was on a double date with some friends, the witness wrote. I was sitting in the back seat behind the drivers and watching the road. Suddenly, the driver and I saw a large, hairy something on two legs crossing the road. It was carrying a small, pig-like football under one arm. It crossed the road from one side to the other in three steps. The driver said, Did anyone see that? And I said, I did. He said, What was it? And I said, I don't know, but it was carrying a little pig. The other two people in the car did not see the creature, as they were busy with their conversation and made fun of them for thinking that they saw something strange. The subject was immediately dropped. It had a lot of hair on long arms and all over, she said. The color of the hair was dark, but lighter around the chest area. She also recalled how she had found large human-like footprint back when she was 12 years old. On January 12, 2007, at 1.30 a.m., a huge creature described as being 10 feet tall and very hairy stepped out in front of a passing motorist on Highway 127 in Liberty, Kentucky. According to eyewitness Michael C., the creature stood there for a minute, then ran back into the woods, making long, screeching noises. Just over a month later, another Liberty, Kentucky resident encountered a similar creature as he was out enjoying his four-wheeler at 9.30 a.m. on the morning of February 21, 2007. I was riding my four-wheeler and I turned it off to use the bathroom before going down my trail that leads to the hauler, said Aaron. I heard a long yelp, kind of like a turkey hen makes, but a lot more high-pitched. Then I heard something take off running. I thought it might be a dog or something, but then what looked like a bear stood up and was about eight to eight and a half feet tall. It just took off through the field, running like it was on fire. The witness claimed that the beast looked at him before running off on two legs into the woods. He further commented that it had blackish-brown hair and big brown eyes. The very next month, as if on cue, three Liberty, Kentucky men encountered Bigfoot on the afternoon of May 30th, 2007. As they were out riding four-wheelers near Casey slash Russell's county line. Joe Lee claims that he, a cousin, and a friend were able to observe the creature for at least five minutes on that occasion. They had stopped beside a creek in the holler where they were riding to rest. We sat there for 10 to 20 minutes, I guess, said Lee, when we heard something coming down the four-wheeler trail. We thought it was my mom or somebody trying to come and get us, so we hid to try to scare her or whoever was coming. But their intended prank didn't happen at all. As they had planned, they noticed a strong skunk-like smell, and the closer the footsteps came, the stronger the odor became. The trio peeked out from behind the log which they were hiding as the footsteps approached, and 
were shocked at what they saw. A seven to eight foot tall, hairy, man-like creature walked right in front of our four-wheeler and stopped. It stared at them for a minute and then went and laid down in the creek. According to Lee, the creature picked up some red clay dirt and started rubbing it all over its body, then got up and walked off into the woods. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot or not, he stated, but I know it wasn't a bear or a human. I hope you enjoyed those stories, and if you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I post new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and if you have your notifications on, you'll be the first to know when those go live. Again, thank you so much for watching the video, and until next time, bye!